Welcome, my name is Mike, the channel is Watch With Mike. Before anything else, I wanna say thank you. This channel has been up a little bit more than half a year and we've reached a thousand subscribers. So um, my sincere gratitude for everyone that has subbed and I've really been enjoying all the conversations we've been having in the comments section below. So, so I just love hearing from you. So there's that invitation to keep the conversation going. Okay, what are we doing here in my wood shop. Well, I want to talk today about watch cleaning. Now, this is not going to be a how to clean a watch tutorial. Rather, it's going to be an overview of everything I've learned over the past year or so and the different, uh, the different kit that I've put together for watch cleaning. I have an all new setup that I've dedicated this corner of my shop to. So after I go through some of the more simple watch cleaning uh, gear that I've acquired, um, I'm gonna take you over here, explain what it is, and we're gonna go through the process and see how effective it is. If you would like to see a uh, walking tour of more of what I have in the shop, I have a uh, tour of the shop and some of my organization tips on my other channel, I'll put a link um, there. I'll put a link down in the. I'll put a link down in the description. So with that, I'm going to switch the camera around, and I will start taking you through. It's basically a timeline of how I've been cleaning watches. These are the tools of my humble watch cleaning beginning, and uh, I started out really simply. Um, I just used a shot glass and I used isopropyl alcohol, and what I was doing was putting the parts in the shot glass, some little soak of isopropyl alcohol, and uh, then I was just using this artist's brush. Between the alcohol and the soak and the brush, if anything was stubborn, I just had this uh, sharpened stick. It's sharp on one end, and it's flattened on the other end, and I gotta tell you, I, I love this stick. I use it now as, as a hold down when I'm working on watches. And it's, it's really nice for getting in creases like cleaning off cases. And uh, because the wood is fibrous, you could even dip it in a little bit of alcohol and kind of get a little rub on it to uh, you know get off parts like on the main plate. In addition to the brush and the stick, I have these shop swabs and uh, I just, bought a gazillion of these at one time and and what I like about these as opposed to you know q-tips um, is that they have the cotton on one side and it's very densely wrapped so I do like that about it you can really get a rub on there but then it also has this open stick end so I, I find that again you can grab a little bit of alcohol and you know really work this into an area if you have some stubborn grime I got a uh, comically large um, bag of all kinds of size of, of uh, swabs, but the, uh, the small ones in this kit work very, very well, and I, I do like having the uh, wooden stick on the other end. I also collected like a, a variety of, of different containers. Um, since the bottom is kind of broad, um, you could just put a small amount of alcohol in there and, and your parts get a good soak. This is just an inexpensive ultrasonic cleaner and I paid maybe $30 for this. I'll fill it about halfway with uh, distilled water. I'll put in a few drops of regular uh, dish detergent and drop in my parts and flip the lid. You turn it on and when you hit the on button, it runs for three minutes. Very, very simple. Um, I said I'd mention some of the downsides. One of the downsides is three minutes just isn't enough if you're ultrasonic cleaning your parts. So I have to kind of hover and keep on turning it on, turning it on, turning it on. Um, so that gets a little bit tedious, but this really was a good way to get into it. The next investment that I made is these stainless steel baskets. And you can put all of your watch parts in here or all of your larger watch parts in there. You clamp the little, uh, little container, I, I think it, Reminds me of a diver's bell. You clamp it shut, okay, and then you can, you know, drop a number of these into your ultrasonic cleaner. And then I also purchased a uh, small set 
of these brass and stainless steel uh, little capsules. They have screen on the top and bottom, and you can put your much smaller parts in these. Drop it in. There's also some room in here if you want to put in, you know, a metal watch bracelet or some case parts or, or the crystal. Um, there's just enough room basically to do everything on a watch in here if you want to. My process was distilled water, um, a couple of drops of dish detergent, and then when that was all done, I would take this out, put it on some paper towel, you know, kind of shake it off, get as much as I could off of it. I would bring this over to the sink, dump it, rinse it, fill it with clear water, do a rinse cycle, dump that water out, and then come back and do another rinse cycle after running the, uh, the parts through the water rinse in the ultrasonic. I would put isopropyl alcohol in here and then basically just come in here, make some watch part T, where I would then go over to some notebook paper and then I would carefully dump the parts out and then inspect them one by one, um, blowing them off with a hand air blower if I needed to, to dry it further. Before I move on, I do want to mention this stuff. This is uh, Rodico putty, and it's this green clay, and this is fantastic for so many things with watchmaking. You can hold parts with it, you can clean up extra oil, you can remove fingerprints. Um, really, this is inexpensive and it's so versatile, and uh, this little investment uh, will pay you back a thousandfold. It, it's really inexpensive and you'll use it all the time. So I started with inexpensive quartz watches that I own, just trying to get them up and running. And then I moved on to this Hoyer uh, dive watch. Basically everything in this watch was cleaned using the methods that I just described. And uh, you know, to this day, it is running great. After doing this watch, I was ready to move on to my first mechanical watch. And in order to do that, I would need some sort of solvent to clean the jewels. This is lighter fluid, lighter fuel. What it really is, is uh, naphtha. You can get this in a home center and it, uh, it does a pretty good job of removing grease. In order to uh, use this, I just kind of came up with this simple method. Um, I took a contact lens case and I put a little bit of naphtha right in there, and because the case is white, it was easy to see when the jewel was in there. After 30 seconds or a minute, I took the jewel out, I put it again on some no clean notebook paper, and uh, just very carefully um, you know, rubbed the jewel on the notebook paper. And I did look at it under the microscope to make sure that there wasn't any fuzz from the paper on the jewel. The jewels went back into the watch, and uh, everything worked pretty well. So what you're seeing here, this was basically my entry level kit into cleaning watch parts as I was learning watch repair. There's just a couple of more things that I want to show you, which I considered kind of extravagances, but I've really been enjoying them. So one of the things I did was I bought a uh, like half a dozen of these glass Petri dishes. And you know, it's basically uh, scientific lab glassware but I've been using them as trays. And they, uh, they're really nice uh, because they have the low edges. You can put just a little bit of solvent. I, I usually use either the isopropyl alcohol or I use the naphtha. Um, you can put that in there and you can hold down. This, is, this has sort of been my technique. You could hold down the part that you're working on and then you can brush at it and you can get it clean. I'm not sure if they go like this or if they go like this, but I use them like this with the, uh, the bigger lid on top. And that just kind of, uh, you know, keeps the solvent from evaporating if I want to walk away from it. Uh, another thing that I got is a, a little set of these. These are um, fiberglass brush pens. Um, this is just like a little pen that's abrasive that lets you scra uh, scrape away at the dirt. These are foam swabs, and, and I find that they hold up pretty well. They have plastic sticks. Um, there's a pointed variety, and then there's a, a regular swab-shaped variety. And uh, these hold solvent very nicely. 
what's nice about this is it has the uh, the pointed stick it has some absorbent uh, work pad up there and then it also has this plastic tip on it uh, that's good for uh, getting into nooks and crannies and, and removing grime and the last thing that i want to uh, show you that i got was some actual peg wood. The way I've been using it is you use an X-Acto knife or a scalpel and you can make a four-sided point on it and then that four-sided point you can put that into the little jewel holes and if you just kind of massage them very lightly that will clean out the jewel holes and then of course you can use the peg wood. Um, I suppose they're, they're probably more gentle than whatever wood this is whether it's oh, I don't know bamboo, pine, um, if you know what Pegwood's made of, uh, feel free to uh, leave me an answer in the comments below. This is a great place to take a break and end video one. And when we return with video two, we will do a run through and complete cleaning cycle using the LNR ultrasonic solution in the new ultrasonic three jar setup. While you're here, please click like, feel free to leave a comment in the space below and I look forward to you joining me in part two, link in the description. See ya.